It's mind blowing to think that your math class is useless. It isn't because you know what? It can land you a super awesome job. And I'm about to show you below with the nine penny problem. So Ninja kick that like button and subscribe and let's get started. Huh. Say you're given nine pennies with one of them weighing more than the others. And you have a weight scale with the condition that whenever you take a measurement, it counts as one move. And you have to spend the least number of moves to determine which of these nine pennies weighs more than the others. What is your answer? Leave a comment below. Okay, so your first approach might be to say, you know what? I'm going to take four pennies on the left side of the scale and on the right, and I'll leave one out. So that if I take the measurement and they're the same on both sides of the scale, the ninth penny I left out is the answer. Otherwise, we'll take the heavier side and we'll dice the experiment up in such a way where now we have two and two being compared. So then when you take this measurement, you either have the case that they're equal, or if they're not equal, we take the heavier side and we finally compare the two pennies. Now, this isn't a bad approach. It's better than spending nine turns possibly checking every individual penny. But with this approach, you still have up to three tries. But you know what's crazy? You can do better than this. What do you think the answer is? Before I show you the answer and the math behind it, let's first think about how we tend to break problems up into smaller parts. If I told you to guess a number between 1 and 10, instead of guessing every individual number, you probably would break the problem space into halves. You would say, uh, is it above 5? And I would say lower. And you'd say, okay, is it above 3? But for this problem here, I gave you 9 pennies. And there's something special about the number 9. Do you happen to see it? Think about logarithms and your pre-calculus coursework and tell me what the special property happens to be. Okay, so we're going to rewrite 9 as 3 squared, and this is going to really be useful in terms of how we're going to reapproach this problem. But before I give you the answer and the, final, and the final approach, let's actually simplify the problem first and build up from there. If I made this a 3-penny problem instead, it's a lot more intuitive to say, you know what, I would break this problem in the thirds. We would have one penny on the left of the scale, one on the right, and finally, one that's left out. If the pennies happen to be equal, the third penny is your answer, and otherwise, the heavier one's your answer. So in this problem space here, we broke up the problem space into three equal parts. So my question for you then is, to get the optimal solution to the nine penny problem, why can we not do the same? What if we actually break up that penny space into three separate parts of three pennies? And if you take this approach, what you would do now is, you would compare three and three. If you have the same weight on both sides, your answer is in the final group of three. Otherwise, it's in the heavier group of three. Ah, but guess what? Do you remember above that the three penny problem actually had a solution of just one measurement needed? Because no matter which group of three you end up with, your approach there is the same. You would again break up that group of three into thirds. You compare two pennies, and then you have a third penny that's left out. So in this case, for the nine penny problem, we only need two measurements. And written as a log, log base three of nine pennies gives you two. Where three as the base for the log here indicates we're doing what's called tertiary search. So in some of the practices like computer science, there's this idea of binary search. Kind of like the number between one and ten being picked when you were guessing what number I was thinking of. But here in this problem space, we're actually breaking up into groups of three instead of groups of two. And this is why it's called tertiary search. So then if I were to extend the nine penny problem to K pennies, where K happens to be a multiple of three, can you write an expression in terms of logs that will tell me how many measurements you need? Okay, if you got your answer as log base three of K, this isn't fully accurate. It works if k happens to be a power of 3, but if it's simply a multiple of 3, it's not fully accurate. Case in point, let's look at the 6-penny problem. If k is 6, yes, you break this problem space up into groups of 2, but you're going to need 2 measurements, and this is your homework problem to verify that that's the case. But the problem is that log base 3 of 6 is not a whole number, and so your answer here is actually to use what's called the ceiling function, shown in square brackets here, because that takes log base 3 of k and rounds it up to a whole number. 